Thanks a lot. Thanks for uh, coming out today. And yes, it's my honor to be here with you today. And I want to introduce you to someone who's a dear Christian friend of mine. Most of you have not been tortured. Most of you have not been in prison. Well, maybe some of you have. But you've not been in prison for your Christian beliefs. Daniel Akbari is a Sharia-trained lawyer, grew up in Iran as a Muslim. In his second year of law school, he came to accept Christ and went to Turkey and for a year practiced his faith and then came back to Iran to continue to practice defending Iranians against the government of Iran in the Sharia courts, everything from the lowest level all the way up to the Supreme Court. And you've heard people with lots of different titles talk about the Quran and talk about Sharia law. And they may look a lot like me, but you're gonna hear something today that's gonna make you smarter than probably 95% of most Americans on Islam. It's my honor, my privilege to introduce to you Daniel Akbari from College Station, Texas. Daniel, come on up and say hi to everybody. Now I will tell you first of all, we're dressed a little different. Now, that's not intentional. I'm slowly bringing Daniel around to the Texas way, so we're gonna give him some tips. So if you see him through the day, just encourage him to look a little more relaxed next time. We're gonna get him some boots. But trust me, he is as Texan as you and I, believes in freedom, and he's gonna talk about why those two things, Sharia law and Islam and America democracy are not compatible. So you're gonna be really entertained. Go ahead, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, I have a short time to talk about Islam and that takes years, but I try to wrap it up in 15 minutes. Uh, first of all, I go with the organization, Islamic organizations in the United States who are actually uh, the front line of uh, Islam here. Uh, organizations like Muslim Student Association, CARE, ISNA, or all other stuffs, those organizations they are trying to uh, do this stealth jihad, as Robert Spencer says, or the sneaky jihad, as I say. Jihad is not uh, the US problem today. That's for overseas. As we might say, they probably never try to wage any big attack like September 11. Many, many coming jihadi attacks are going to be a small and in different, sporadic in different places. By youth, by people who are uh, homegrown terrorists, homegrown jihadists, those who are growing up in this country with this culture, they are born in this country. So we just go to Sharia because Sharia is the real threat to the United States. This country is based on secularism or based on multiculturalism that I don't accept that term multiculturalism, as far as they come and they get melted into the community, as far as they come and uh, adopt the culture, adopt the American's value and respect it, that's fine. But when it comes to the understanding of right and wrong, I don't accept multiculturalism. They cannot have their own standard of right and wrong and survive or try to convert people and bring them to under Sharia law's flag. I don't buy that. So normally, because they are weak today, they are not that much, they are about 10 million or about 12% or 10%, I don't know, not 10%, about 3, 5% or whatever. They are not uh, strong enough to wage a big jihadi attack, to overthrow the culture, to overthrow this country by force. They are trying to do it in a sneaky way by making organization, by exploiting the system, by trying to um, use the Constitution against itself, against Americans. Some of them are using many media and many different uh, liberal organization to push their, aden their agendas. One of, those one of those organizations like, for example, ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, even though they are liberals, even though they are pro-democracy, as they might say, <coughs> they are at the same time pro-Sharia. They are at the same time the advocators of Islamic organizations. Whenever any of those uh, 
Islamic members or those communities run into problem with FBI or any law enforcement, they just call ACLU and ask for help and they come and represent them for free before the courts. So the whole point is there are many tricks that they use to advance their, ad their agenda, like the term Islamophobia. Whoever talks about Islam, they just try to shut their mouth by saying, this is Islamophobia, you are making a bad look of Islam, that is not appropriate, Islam is nice, and there is nothing wrong with Islam. But there are many things wrong with Islam, and Islam is a scary, and it is not about phobia, it is a legitimate fear. Being scared of Islam, being scared of Sharia is legitimate because it's gonna take away freedom of speech, freedom of life, and all freedoms that Americans have fought for it for centuries. The other, ter uh, the other term is actually the greater jihad. Some of them have come up with the idea of the greater jihad, which they are trying to sanitize Islam, sanitize those uh, jihadi acts by saying those people are some minority, some crazy people who are not Muslims. Islam has nothing to do with jihad, Islam is peaceful. But the point is, the idea that they come up with the greater jihad, which is fighting against evil temptation, it is something not acceptable by any Islamic rules, by any Islamic source. So there is no point, no source, and no validity for the idea of the greater jihad. Jihad is fighting against non-Muslims, against infidels, to bring them to Islam. What these organizations who are fighting for to establish Sharia in this country are saying is just deceiving, a pure deception. They are trying to change this country in a sneaky way by exploiting the system, by using nice terms, many, as you might say, peaceful speeches and talking, which is not, which is not true. The whole point is, the real threat to the United States is Sharia and the its fighters are these organizations and they need to be addressed. Americans have to ask them for transparency. They have to ask them, tell us more about Sharia. Tell us more about the Quran. Tell us more about Jihad and those ideology, you know. Uh, Another thing is, even though uh, people from different countries are not necessarily dangerous, but what they bring, what ideology they bring with themselves, it has to be evaluated by Americans, then accepted or rejected. Islam as an ideology is dangerous, specifically it's not compatible with the Western values, with Americans' values, with Christianity, and it, this is wrong and that's a lie if somebody says that is compatible. And they are trying to give a nice looking of Sharia to, to make it look compatible, which is not true. There are many horrible stuff about treating, with, treating women, about uh, putting down women. Actually, they might say no, but that is right. I mean, uh, Islam commands a man to, the Quran commands the man to beat up his wife. That is, that is something that I don't think is, it's going to be compatible with the U.S. culture, or in many other parts. They are not equal. Men and women are not equal in Islam. Men is has I mean, has twice right than a woman might have. So, uh, talking about Sharia. If somebody knows a little bit about Islam, is gonna understand that uh, there are many, many horrible things with Sharia which is not compatible. But the problem is, those organizations, those Islamic organizations, are giving a different looking of Islam, which is not true, and that's based on deception, just to grow. And Americans should know that already. I'll try to wrap it up, but uh, if there are many questions afterward, I'm going to be in that booth, the red booth, so you can come over and we can talk about it more. Thanks, Daniel. I want to bring this discussion right back to here locally. 
Sharia law, Quran, all that sounds very uh, nebulous and very academic-like. 63 miles uh, east of here is a small town called Springville or Smithville, Texas. Anybody know where that is? Some of you do. This September, Islamic Journeys was introduced to the local community there, funded by the National Endowment of Humanity. Muslim Journeys was funded by Islamic groups funneled money through Georgetown and into the National Endowment of Humanities to do one thing, to do exactly what Daniel was just talking about, jihad, a silent civilization jihad, to teach the young students who were at the school as well as in the community about Islam. And they were going to do that in an open forum. And yet, when the open forum occurred, the first announcement out of their mouths were, we're not going to entertain any questions. And anyone who asks any questions will escort you out. Right down the road, here in Texas State College at San Marcos, there's an organization on campus that represents an organization that across the country has more chapters in state colleges and, and private colleges around the country than Democratic and Republican clubs combined. And it's called the Muslim Student Association. More chapters than Republican and Democrats combined. In San Antonio alone, there are five universities. All five of them have those. And in Houston, Texas, there are five high schools that have the Muslim student associations, organizations there, telling them one side about Islam, the side that, as Daniel talked about, the side that they'll tell you that's peaceful. Well, there were Germans who told you there were peaceful aspects about being a German, but they didn't tell you about the other aspects. And it's not about the people. The greatest abuser of Muslims are other Muslims. It's them that we need to pray for. It's them we need to reach out for. And when you tell them the truth, they oftentimes question you. And that's understandable. The first word that Muhammad received from Gabriel, who was the representative for Allah, was read. Well, Muhammad was illiterate. The second word out of his mouth was read. The third word was read. Gabriel was trying to tell Muhammad to read. I'm telling you, and one of the things that Act for America does is tell Americans, we need to read. I served for 20 years in the Air Force, flying fighters, served three rotations to the sandbox. The first 10 years of my existence of flying fighters, I knew the enemy. I could talk about communism. I could study their tactics. I could look at all that. But in the last 10 years and three rotations and watching friends die, and doing something that my intel guys couldn't tell me squat all about, other than the tactical target I was going to take out. But why? What is it that we're fighting? I can understand communism. Uh, don't worry about it. Until the day I left in 1999, nobody could explain. 42 miles away from here is my son-in-law going through training at Camp Bullis. Leaves the end of this month to go to Afghanistan to Kabul. And they know no more and they're teaching no more about Islam and the ideology and what the threat is and understanding that. And part of that is because of infiltration. The Islamic S Center for San Antonio, we discovered earlier last year, thanks to David Galbitz, author of Muslim Mafia, who infiltrated his son and others into the Council for American Islamic Relations. When he came to town, he visited the local, local mosque. He's very good at getting into mosque and not revealing who he is. And in the course of that conversation, found out from them that, in fact, the Islamic Center for San Antonio, along with the local imam, which at the time there were only two, now there are four imams in the Air Force, but with the conjunction and the approval of the Air Force, that every single basic cadet or basic Airman Cadet at Lackland Air Force Base goes through a mandatory training course on Islam and the culture of Islam. Now I can tell you they're not doing that for Judaism, they're not doing that for Christianity, they're not doing it for any other reason because pressure from the Obama administration and those within the Defense Department convinced them that this was a good cultural thing to do. But we didn't find that out because they went and volunteered that information. So my son-in-law is going over to Kabul and all these other young men and women 
And their goal was not just to give them the cultural class. That was the cover, we found out. The goal was to have at least three cadets from every single class come back to them for further proselytization. And the imam told David, oh, yes, we're meeting that goal very easily. So the young men and women who are working on the airplanes, who are providing security, are they truly taking the oath? Or have they taken another oath? I took an oath to protect and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And when I got out of the Air Force, that threat didn't go away. And I looked around for an organization that was doing something about it. I looked for an organization that wasn't just sending out emails or, or talking about it, but that was doing something. And I looked and saw Brigitte Gabrielle. In San Antonio, we started up the chapter right after the Boston bombing when there was a lot of, a lot of attention. People were very concerned, but like everything else, it kind of drops off. But fortunately, the folks in San Antonio, we brought in David, we discovered that. We have one of, one of our folks here who almost a year ago today, Mustafa Carroll, the director of the Council for American Islamic Relations in Dallas, stood on the steps of our capital and said the following, Muslims are above the law. We don't follow democratic. And the only reason why we got that is because a young Act for America woman went into a, a meeting which everybody else there was Muslim and she recorded it and brought that back and gave it to World Net Daily and Breitbart and everybody else and gave that story out and they were revealed for the, the double lying cheats that as Daniel talks about in the Quran that's authorized you can lie you want to lie about your faith now not every Muslim is going to strap a you know or, or is going to stand on the steps and say that I have many Muslim friends that are very peaceful. But it's not about the Muslims. It's about the ideology. And the only way you can defeat that is knowledge. And the place I got knowledge was from Act for America. We have a chapter in San Antonio. We have a table over here. We have a lot of material. Reverend Joe Carey with RadicalTruth.net has a lot of great material over here. We also have Dr. Mark Pfeiffer, who's from the uh, Center for uh, Christian Center for Islamic Studies there in San Antonio. They'll give classes every Tuesday night that you can go in. 25 bucks for the entire semester. You need to learn and you need to get your Sunday school classes. You need to get others. And oh, by the way, the courts in the United States, over 50 cases, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, state and local judges have sat down and looked at the courts and said, you know, we're going to pass our decision. Not We're not going to make that I'm an elected judge or appointed judge. I'm not going to make that call. I'm going to turn it over to a Sharia judge, a Sharia court. Now, you said, no, nah, that's only in Europe. That's in France. Yeah, England's got a bunch of those. Let me tell you. In Richardson, Texas, in 2002, a family court case was referred to a Sharia court. Three other cases in the state of Texas have not been heard by or decided by state or local judges, but were decided by Sharia judges. And those are just the ones who come forward and that the other ones, the judges who looked at them when they brought forward and said, get out of here. Who knows how many of those cases have come forward? It's kind of like a tax on your computer. All it takes is one, but it's usually not the first one that gets through. They've been beaten at it for a while and finally it gets through. And that's exactly what has happened for the last 1400 years. Muhammad talked about patience. I talked to a Muslim out in Las Vegas, and he told me the United States is more Islam, more Muslim than my country of Morocco. And I looked at him like he was crazy. He said, oh, yeah, look, it's a beautiful place. We're here in the desert. It's lovely. This is peaceful. Everybody's nice to each other. I didn't want to break the news to him, but it wasn't because of Islam. It was for a lot of other reasons. But that was his view of the world. And so I said, well, do you think we'll be Sharia? Do you think we'll go Islamic in the next, you know, 30 or 40 years, they said, oh, no, 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 too political. And I mean without hesitation, without a breath, he said, 300 years, yes. How many of us think in terms of 300 years? Our country's not even ready. Unless you talk to Sheila Jackson, who thinks it's 400, but that's another story. <laughs> but they do. They're patient. It's my grandparents 
it's my grandkids, it's my kids that are going to be impacted by it. You need to learn about it or the freedoms that you have are going to go away. Act for America is doing something about it. American Laws for American Courts is a bill that we hope to put forward. We hope every single, whichever one of these candidates win, if they're not voting for that, get them out of here. I'll tell them that right now. Because American Laws for American Courts basically says we won't have foreign or international laws superseding local or state laws. That's how we do things here in America. And textbooks. Right now in the state of Texas, there are citizens, some of them act for America, many of them are other patriots like you. We have 22 teams looking at the social studies textbooks that will be introduced for the school year 2015. Why? Because the three largest textbook manufacturers that, come, that distribute textbooks, not just in the state of Texas, but all over the country, but here in Texas, two out of the three of those, one is owned 52% by Middle East country and conglomerates there. And the other one, the second largest shareholder, is a Middle East mega uh, European, uh, excuse me, Islamic uh, large corporation. And they ha are heavily influencing. And when the balance is 300 words of Islam and 50 words of Christianity in the textbooks that your kids, your grandkids are looking at, something's wrong. So Act for America is doing things. And if you want to learn more about us, if you want to sign up to get our newsletter nationally as well as locally in San Antonio, there's our table over there. Please take a look at it. It's in the red tent over there. Again, Reverend Joe Carey, they have some books and others information. Thanks so much to Linda and everybody for putting this on. You guys have done a great job. Breitbart, thanks for coming out. And Daniel, thanks for coming out today. God bless all of y'all for coming out. And God bless America.